So let's welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Professor Ji Wang from Piso Electric Device Laboratory, Ningbo University, China. So let me give a small introduction of Professor Ji Wang. Dr. Ji Wang has been a professor at Ningbo University since 2002 and the founding director of the Piso Electric Device Laboratory. He has extensive industrial experience as engineer and consultants to global acoustic wave devices companies. Professor Ji Wang has also held visiting positions at Chiba University, University of Nebraska, Lincoln, and Agar National Laboratory. He received his PhD from Princeton in 1996. Professor Wang has been working on acoustic waves in piezoelectric solids for resonator design and analysis in his research with international patterns and over 130 journal papers. Professor Wang is also active in IEEE, ASME, and IEC. He is the editor in chief on structural longevity since 2015. Let's welcome Professor Jiwen. Pass to you, Professor. You may start. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, your mic is on mute, Prof. Dr. Haru, can you unmute Prof? I try to unmute. Okay, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very unmuted. Okay. No, this done the work. Cannot hear? We can hear you. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So, should I start? Yeah, yeah, you can start off. Okay. Thank you very much, Amadeep and the Professor Haran Rashdi. I'm glad to have this opportunity to talk to you about uh, our work. But before I start, I would like to say that I'm a member of ITE, IEEE, currently I'm a senior member. I'm very happy with IEEE since I was a graduate student. I get tra travel support for IEEE conferences every year when I was a student, I, the IEEE was the most friendly society to graduate students. So since I graduated from a university, I kept my IEEE membership for so many years. And uh, lately I have been with the IEEE conferences every year, and I am very happy with the IEEE. I hope most of you will find mm -hmm. the programs of IEEE beneficial to you, and you can get a lot of experience and help in your career. 
and uh, in your study. Well, for me, I have been working with uh, mainly with the IEEE UFFC, that's ultrasonics, ferroelectrics, and the Frequency Control Society. And my talk today also belongs to this society and they are one of its main subjects. Uh, currently, many of us are under the threat of COVID-19 or coronavirus in different uh, countries, regions. It's just uh, devastating to all of us, but I'm glad uh, Professor Haron, Rashi, and Amadi uh, organized this activity to help us connect it and keep our professional technical exchange going. That's very great. And I hope everyone will support their efforts and then uh, let's meet today in online with this webinar but in the future i'm sure there will be plenty of uh, opportunities to to uh, meet again and discuss our work okay about today's presentation the title is the frequency temperature relation of lower cost for cold cold crystals and uh, cold crystals for sensor applications. Well, there are a few key words, but before that, uh, you probably already know that I'm working a piezoelectric device laboratory of Ningbo University that's in China. We are close to Shanghai. It's already very hard today and uh, but we, we enjoy it here. Hope you also enjoy uh, your stay uh, wherever it is uh, and uh, play, uh, stay safe from coronavirus. Okay, I just mentioned that there are a few subjects, uh, keywords that we wanted to talk. Uh, or explain during this talk, but uh, here is a piece of crystal. So I'm sure some of the, you are familiar with yet with it, quartz crystal. Quartz crystal, uh, since many of you are in Malaysia, so probably you know there is a good chance that you get more experience about this in Malaysia because in my past experience, I worked with Epson company uh, from Japan. They have a very large plant in Malaysia making cold crystal products. Cold crystal uh, products, of course, you need uh, to process cold crystals and uh, the products being used everywhere from uh, home in electronics to uh, uh, center light, radio communication, cell phone, and so on. So anyway, for a piece of quartz uh, crystal, uh, you can see from this picture that there will be different cards. And each of these cards will have different applications. Uh, I think most of us are familiar with some orientations like uh, AT, because the AT card cold crystals are being used in many electronics, computers, uh, routers, and uh, so on, cell phones. Uh, but there are also other orientations of cards like AT. X cut, we use it for thermometers, different temperature. Uh, the SC cut is also very popular for very uh, 
expensive products for the uh, internet uh, applications. So, as you can see, for Quartz Crystal, there are already so many different orientations in use. But then the question is, are there new orientations we don't know, but they can offer good properties to make products? That's a question I got many years ago from an engineer in a cold crystal company. So that gave me the idea that why don't we do further research? See, if we already know all the orientations of cold crystals. So that's how my work on this started. So here are the outline of my talks. So basically, there will be five sections. Some of them will take a lot more time, but some of them I just quickly go through. So let's just basically follow this line. So what is the ideal part of cold crystal? Well, that depends on the application. What we study, we are studying here is for the cold crystal regulator application and for sensors. One of the important requirements is that it must be stable with the temperature. For most of cold crystals, the frequency temperature relation is like this. Some of them are linear, some of them are cubical. For applications, we can always describe it with a function like this. It's a cubical relation. But what do we need for applications? That depends. If you want to make a quartz crystal product like resonators, the most important requirement is that it must be stable with temperature. So we choose the AT cut like this. It has a very good rating. Uh, That's the AT cut. The orientation is this with this angle. AT cut is one of the very good the best frequency temperature relation for regulators. So it's also uh, one of the very popular products. I think in today's world, like 90% of cold crystal regulators are made by an AT card. So it has a very simple uh, frequency temperature relation. It could be called but all the other terms like the uh, linear uh, uh, square terms are zero. So we get a pure uh, cubical curve, uh, have a very broad flat rating. So that means its property is in, in certain rating is not in sin is insensitive to temperature at the operating frequency. The operating frequency is about 25 degrees. 25 degrees as below is the room temperature. So this means the device can have very good property at room temperature as we need for most of the home in electronics. So how do we get this? Well, because we mentioned the, the frequency temperature relation is a cubical function, so that we make this linear and the square uh, uh, coefficients to be zero, so then we get the cubical curve. 
So this is our idea, and we are going to follow this line to find some new orientations. Well, that the uh, idea will be based on the tropical uh, uh, frequency temperature relation and the, the mathematical procedure to find the, the optimal uh, coefficients for this relation. So it looks like it's uh, straightforward. And uh, for certain applications, if we have the pure cubical relation, we can use it for rhythmators. But if we have a very good linear relation, then we can use it for thermometers. Well, then how are we going to do it? We use the incremental thermal field theory. This part of my talk basically is based on, I think some of you might be familiar, it's based on the theory of piezoelectricity or elasticity. So that's not the classes usually we take in electrical engineering, but to design this product, we needed to understand uh, such theories so we get good properties art from quartz uh, crystal. So basically I go through this and if you are interested, there are many papers and some books read. So the incremental SOMA theory is based on the concept that a piece of quartz crystal in the beginning is in the natural state with its temperature at zero. Then we let uh, it uh, uh, deform with a load. The load can be electrical or mechanical. So no, the crystal will have the configuration like this. There will be a deformation of U. Then after this, there will be a temperature changing. Then in this case, so the temperature is changing, there will also will be a deformation related to uh, uh, temperature uh, changing. So we have three states of the material or the cold crystal, natural state, uh, initial state and the final state. So basically there are three states to describe the process of loading and the temperature changing. Then these equations, basically it's the theory of elasticity, people in electricity. So some of you might know that uh, to describe the deformation of solids or here the uh, cold crystal is a piezoelectric solid so you have the uh, strain uh, stress and the uh, equation of motion and uh, the stress terms on the boundary these equations are needed for the description of vibrations of cold crystal. Here are some of the parameters, some parameters like this is a, a linear thermal expansion factors for cold crystal. You need them up to the third order of the temperature. So we have this. Then with this, we can calculate the elastic constants of cold crystal. Again, it's a cubical relation with the temperature. 
So with these equations and the parameters of the closed crystal, so we can go ahead to study the vibrations of hot crystal plates, which can be used uh, to make a hot crystal regulator. So BW or ball, some of you are familiar with it. It's a bulk acoustic wave. Later on, we are also going to talk about the surface acoustic wave and so. Okay, so we just mentioned that we have the incremental thermal theory for the study of the vibrations. And here we are going to talk about what we know in the past about the thermal properties of quartz crystals. In the early days, it was like in the AT card actually it was from the discovered in 1933 by two researchers independently by the Koga from Japan and the Beckman from Germany. So uh, at that time, people try to get the frequency temperature relation of the quartz crystal. We get this and found that uh, uh, with this orientation, we can get a very good uh, frequency temperature relation. So that's uh, the beginning of the AT card uh, products. Uh, people did more work on this, particularly by Beckman, and uh, these are researchers in the U.S. They study the, the material, material properties, basically the elastic constants of coarse crystals with double rotations. There, this means the crystal are rotated twice, we found the more uh, 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 accurate relations of frequency temperature, and this can help us to find some good orientations. One of the important orientations people found that during the process was the SC card. SC card today is a very popular orientation used to make high precision resonator sensors. I think for some mission critical applications, like you can find from the uh, internet and uh, atomic clock, uh, basically we use the SC card but then, as I said, it is from the study of the thermal properties of quartz crystals. Okay, in the process, there are more orientations are discovered with different uh, advantages for different uh, applications. But then we still feel that some of the uh, uh, orientations are isolated or maybe accidental. So we wanted to do a systematic study to see if we find all the good orientations or even some new orientations for possible new products. That's our purpose, I, as I mentioned before. So how do we do that? Well, we start from a formulation of frequency temperature relations of both. 
with the theory I just mentioned, the incremental SOMO field theory. So we start we we start with a plate called crystal plate for so its vibrations with displacement. There are three displacement and the boundary conditions on the surface of the plate is uh, free. So we have the strains, we have the spaces, we have the equations of motion, all of them are in matrix format form. So it will be easy for the study or calculation. Okay, so everything is in uh, matrix form. Then with these equations, we assume the deformation will be like this. So uh, that's a vibration displacement. Then if we substitute this displacement into the equations formation, uh, equation of motion, we get this equation. From this equation, we can get the plate uh, uh, frequencies of vibration because this is an infinite plate. We get three vibration frequencies and uh, each of them are related to different vibration mode. If you are familiar with cold crystal resonators, some of them called A mode, B mode, C mode, basically the highest frequency is the A mode, next line B mode, and the C mode has the lowest vibration frequency. This is for, from the cold crystal product. Okay, so for infinite plate, we have the solutions and help us to identify the vibration mode. Then, what are we going to do to use this for the orientations? Well, remember the elastic constants. Uh, the summer properties are related to the orientation. So now we are going to consider the orientation with all the material properties and we can get the results we wanted. So that's the equation, equation we just uh, used. Then from here, the uh, so more coefficient of a frequency is a function of the orientation and the temperature. So we have the uh, two angles, the orientation and the temperature. So basically, we want to find the, the expressions of this. Uh, first, the uh, derivative of temperature, second, the third. And this will help us to identify the best orientation with frequency temperature relation. So basically, we will use the equations we just showed before. And here are the coefficients. Are the coefficients from the uh, frequency temperature relations look quite messy well but uh, as you can understand because this work has been done in past uh, almost 100 years so we have to take a different approach people tried this with simple method before so we are working with a systematic approach so we can get uh, Thematic uh, results. Uh, these equations are needed in the calculation. It's basically from the, the metric as we showed before. 
looks like uh, quite complicated, but you can see uh, we mentioned that this is a uh, some parameters of quartz crystal related to the uh, temperature. Uh, yeah, uh, T naught is the reference temperature that uh, you have this cubic relations uh, for the uh, elastic constants also. So we have all the equations we need. So basically here, we want to try our formulation to see if we will can recover, recover earlier results. Yes, we want to find the new orientations, but we need to check to validate my form our formulation with earlier results. So earlier results, what are the well, AT cut? That's very popular. People found this long time before. And the SC cut, also very popular. So we already know these are good orientations. We want to see if our formulation will also give these orientations. If we can recover these orientations from our formulation, well, at least it will tell us that it's the method, the formulation the procedure is reliable. Okay, so. We have these results. We want to see if we can find them. So from our calculation, we got these results. This is so many curves with different uh, frequency, temperature relations. Like this one is quite clear. Oh, this one is three-dimensional plot. So we, all have, we have this. That found that, okay, indeed, our method got all the earlier results. See, the AT cut is on the curve, SC, IT, SC cut, all are on this curve. This tells us our formulation can give the results all the earlier findings that we can just examine all the points on this curve to see some of them can be used. So basically that's a validation of our method. Okay, after this, then we just try to find some to check uh, if the frequency temperature relation we get are also uh, the same with uh, uh, earlier studies. Okay, okay. So we get that the AT cut. We put on the same uh, plot, but uh, the uh, turnover temperature is different. Okay, the AT cut is uh, 25 degrees, uh, but uh, we found that uh, if we change the AT cut a little, we can get an orientation looks uh, a little better than AT cut. So we have this SC cut, it's here. We know this is the SC cut, then with a different uh, uh, a slightly different uh, a change of variation, we can get a different turnover temperature and a much broad frequency temperature range. You see here in this range, the frequency temperature relation is still quite good, but with the SC cut, it's like this. So anyway, we found that the procedure can be validated and we can re re recover all the earlier results. So we are quite happy and confident 
with what we have. And uh, actually we found that if we uh, enlarge this part of the curve, we found that uh, our results, that curve is really good to predict uh, the uh, good orientation of uh, quartz crystals. Okay, so there are chance. There are chances that we can find a more uh, orientation from this curve, but more importantly, from these curves. So these curves are to be examined uh, to be examined for some novel applications. Uh, okay, I think that's all for. So that part, basically, uh, we validated our uh, approach and uh, no, we are ready to find some new orientations for possible applications. Uh, let's turn to saw devices. Uh, what we talked before is the uh, cold crystal. Because cold crystal is vibrating in different uh, uh, vibration uh, mode and uh, frequency. Uh, if you want to see the difference between different uh, vibration mode, well, then we have PV, S wave, and here the surface acoustic wave or Rayleigh wave, and uh, different uh, uh, material, material uh, orientations. I think, let's see. For solo applications, basically we use SDT card. SD card has a, a better frequency temperature relations for soul. But then you may know that the soul products, the frequency temperature relation is a lot as good as the AT card quartz crystal regulator. So it's more important for us to see if we can find a better soul product with new orientations of quartz crystal. Okay, then we will use the equations we had before and uh, with the consideration of surface acoustic wave in a piece of a quartz crystal. In case of a surface acoustic wave, the deformation will be different. So the difference, well, if you want low, there are two uh, coordinates, x1, x2. For quartz crystal, there is only one. Because there are two coordinates, that means, well, more complicated to study. But uh, since we have the procedure, so we can uh, do it with the equations we had before. So we just uh, assume the uh, displacement or deformation, apply the boundary conditions, then we get a frequency equation. We solve the frequency equation for different orientation, different angles, and the temperature. We will see if we can find the Y with a better frequency temperature relation. So that's the idea to work on this problem. Okay, so that's a earlier result. For ST cut of cold crystal, the frequency temperature relation is like that. The parabolic, it's no longer cubical curve. So we have calculations, we have measurements, basically they are consistent. So 
uh, we did the calculation with our theory, we get the, this. So basically, our uh, equations for the calculation of frequency temperature relations are good. Uh, that's what I want to see. Uh, since the uh, procedure uh, formulation is correct or it's uh, uh, verified by this result, we can just go ahead to try to find the possible better orientations. Okay, so we did the calculations for different angles. We get the uh, different uh, uh, frequencies like uh, people did before. Uh, this was in early days. Uh, some people worked on this before to find uh, uh, good orientations for surface of good degrees of uh, regulators. Uh, that's from our orientation. Basically, we consider the two uh, orientations, two angles. We found this angle might uh, for good frequency temperature relations, just like this. There are two orientations we found from our calculation. Then we plotted the frequency temperature relation. Yeah, they looks good. So they are the cubic. Uh, frequency temperature relation with flat regions. Much better than the ST cut. You may remember for the ST cut, the frequency temperature relation is parabolic. So for these orientations, we really have good frequency temperature relation. But uh, there is a drawback. The drawback is that for these orientations, the turn over temperature, the turn over temperature are quite high. It's not the room temperature. So ST cut has a turn over temperature about uh, 40 degrees Celsius. But here, these two orientations Although they have a cubical frequency temperature relation, but the turnover temperature is quite high. So we have to consider to design devices with these orientations for better performance a, a, a high temperature. So at least in addition to technology to make these devices work in the uh, constant temperature, we Uh, orientations for cold crystal uh, regulators on the surface of acoustic wave regulators. We use the Mendelian plate equations in a thermal field with the material properties we got from this study, as we showed before, so we can have a detailed study of uh, properties of cold crystal regulators. This is very important in the design phase of cold crystal regulators. Uh, this part basically is just an extension. We need to consider all the displacement of uh, 
uh, called crystal pla uh, plate, then the equations belong to the Mendeleev plate theory. So there will be more equations, but basically the procedure is the same. The material properties are the same. So there is no extra difficulties in understanding the basic principles and the procedures, except that you have a much larger matrices to play with. So these are the equations. So you have more equations. And uh, the numerical calculation part is also uh, more complicated, but basically we can get the uh, same results. So that's our calculation with the maintenance plate equations. We still find the uh, orientations we are interested. So this uh, plot is called the uh, uh, frequency spectra. Basically, it's, uh, uh, the uh, frequency versus the size of a plate and uh, points like this is a design point. That means here we can get a very good frequency temperature relation. So we can show you indeed it's very good uh, because at this point the second shear vibration is very strong. And that's a frequency temperature relation of certain orientations. Uh, this is another case. We can still plot the uh, model shapes. And uh, to demonstrate the frequency temperature relation, uh, it's uh, really good. So the results here, why the finite uh, plate, why the infin infinite plate? For infin uh, in infinite plate, it's easy to do the calculation, uh, but then the results is very close. So basically, when you pick up the orientation you want to do the design, you can try the infinite plate first. Then you go to the uh, finite plate to do the detailed study. Okay, so I think that's all for my presentation. There will be some conclusions, but I think it's already explained. Basically, I want to tell you that the procedure is new. People didn't do this before. Uh, so we tried it, we validated the procedure with the low one results, like AT, ST, I showed you. We got the curve with all these uh, special orientations on the curve. So basically, we recovered all the important results before. Then we found some new orientations, and we showed the frequency temperature relations so basically, there are possibilities. We use this method to pick up some orientations to develop new products. Okay, I think that's all. The research is supported by the Natural Science Foundation of China and the company here, TXC in Ningbo. I have been working with them and also supported by the city government of Ningbo. Uh, these are uh, uh, faculty members and uh, students from my laboratory, and uh, you might meet some of them in conferences also. So because we go to many conferences, primarily the IEEE, UFFC, Frequency Control, Artosonics, but uh, also in China, we have a IEEE conference. I organized it. Uh, it's called SPODA. It's a symposium on 
Uh, the negotiation or cost to live device. We have been holding the conference for 10, more than 10 years. And uh, there, I think uh, we had some uh, participants from uh, Malaysia before. Okay, thank you very much for the participation. That's all for my talk. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Ji Wang. Uh, it was really an informative se session, uh, a lot of sharing, a lot of new knowledge uh, for those who are not exactly from the same area, uh, but for those who are uh, uh, interested in census technology and all that. Okay, so now I open up the floor for questions. If you have any question, you can uh, unmute yourself. Uh, and you can directly ask with uh, Professor Wong, or you can just type it in the chat box. I will read through it. Good afternoon, My Professor name. Wang. Good afternoon, yes. Professor Wang. Myself, Dr. Manish Kumar Bafna from Prestige Engineering College, India. I referred you or one of the paper in my temperature dependent photoluminescence spectra paper in 2006. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, and I want to know that how you calculate the uh, strain matrices. Uh, is there any other technique to calculate the strain matrices? Oh, the, the material properties of matrices is basically, I think we, we didn't uh, uh, do the testing or or measurement. We also get data from other people. Basically, we just use the uh, uh, earlier uh, measurement of material properties and uh, did our calculation. Okay. And uh, is there any good book for stress and strain study? Oh, you have any soft book copy of book? Oh. Oh. Uh, sorry, I don't uh, have a book. I just have papers on uh, internet websites. So I think uh, if you wanted to, well, uh, actually there no book on the on the procedure on the theory I mentioned, the incremental thermal theory. There is no book, so you have to read the book, the, the papers, papers by myself, uh, but also uh, Professor Y K Yang. Oh. Professor Y. K. Young is also Malaysian. Uh, he is in uh, with Rutgers. There are, papers, uh, there are some papers of singularity detail also available on the stress as in the strength. Uh, which paper? Singularity detail. Uh, there is a one group also working from Japan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I think there are uh, a few groups, yes. In Japan, I think. Uh, in Tokyo Metropolitan University, but also Chiba University, I visited there before. In the US, uh, Professor Y.K. Young, a Manesson in, 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 with Rutgers University. Basically, the incremental thermal theory uh, was developed by Professor Y.K. Young. So you, 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 you can find his paper. His paper is the original research. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh yeah, someone just mentioned that uh, some new material, new material. Well, the, yeah, this is a difficult part because as you see, these materials are harder to get also to measure the uh, material properties of these materials also is very difficult uh, because it's not as easy to get this material, this one thing. Another thing is that 
uh, you need a much accurate measurement of the material property. So it's a very difficult uh, issue, but the people are trying because these materials are being used to develop uh, uh, acoustic wave regulators or RF devices used in cell phone wireless communication. So people are doing that, uh, trying, but not uh, all materials. The, uh, availability of material properties are still limited. Uh, hello, Professor. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, um, presentation. So I have one doubt. Uh, are you now uh, currently working in uh, long side crystal, sir? Longer side? Uh, no, I, I think most of my work is concentrated on uh, cold crystal because uh, there are uh, so many companies working on cold crystal. But uh, longer side, you can use this theory for longer side definitely. Longer side uh, uh, is the same type of uh, uh, crystal, so uh, the theory can be used. Um, but compared with the quartz, it has uh, um, high temperature stability, you know, up to 1,400 uh, degrees Celsius. That's why I'm asking, sir. Uh, yeah, you are correct. Uh, the uh, next side uh, may have good uh, frequent temperature finishes, the uh, higher temperature. That's true. But uh, I think from industry, there are still not enough uh, products with land site uh, and so on for in mass production. Basically, because they said that uh, uh, processing of land site uh, is more expensive and more difficult than cold crystals. That's what I heard. OK, OK, sir. Thank you so much, because I am working on this material for uh, ISRO. ISRO, you know very well, from India. Okay, no, I understand. So you know, for research, many people are trying. Yeah, that's for sure. But if you want to produce it in large quota, uh, quantity uh, for cell phone applications, that uh, there are difficulties. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. One, there is one question from one student. Uh, it's uh, Bill is uh, uh, currently second year student in Bachelor's of e, e in Curtin University, Malaysia. The question yes. is, uh, I would like to know why parabolic curves of frequency temperature are worse than other curves, which was mentioned in the BAW part. Okay, okay, very good question. Yeah, uh, students are very, are very careful in, in uh, seeing the technical details. The parabolic relation why it's uh, bad because uh, uh, for these applications, we always want a very broad uh, uh, range with uh, frequency stability. Uh, in this case, uh, the parabolic uh, curve, uh, you have a very small region with the given uh, frequency uh, limits. So uh, if uh, you have a, a cubic curve, then you have a much larger uh, frequency range. That is very important because for the, the applications of these devices, you always want the uh, frequency changing variation due to unexpected uh, results be very small. So otherwise, the uh, network will be disrupted. So that's why. Uh, uh, the cubic relation is much better. Thank you, Prof. Wang. Uh, is there any other question from the floor, uh, from WebEx or from YouTube? By the way, Prof, uh, we have received, I think, more than 60 or 70 messages. Everyone is thanking you and we are appreciating your presentation. 
uh, very well understanding, clear understanding, a uh, lot of uh, a lot of uh, comments. Uh, excellent session. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Wang. Excellent slide and discussion. So I I believe if if I am not counting wrongly, I think more than fifty or sixty messages uh, I have been seeing at both YouTube and uh, Webex. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me and thank you for organizing this session. I really enjoy it. And uh, uh, well, I'm also a member uh, of the Region 10 IEEE, a senior member. Uh, this also gives me the impression that you have been doing a lot of work uh, for activities, conferences, and uh, I wish that in the future I have more opportunities to, to meet uh, particularly young generation professionals in Region 10 and work uh, with you guys. Yes, Prof. Sure, we will keep in view. Uh, in fact, we will see maybe we can invite you once this COVID-19 things are cooled down. Uh, we may, if we are arranging a physical session, we may invite you for any of the conference. Uh, we will keep in view and we will be continue uh, running some webinars with you and with your group. Uh, just I had one question that earlier somebody uh, mentioned about 2D materials. Actually, I wasn't much uh, uh, focusing that time because I was reading the questions. So uh, how do you see the 2D materials perspective for piezoelectric applications? I mean. Uh, like I've been working with the uh, molybdenum disulfide and tungsten disulfide for optoelectronic applications, like for solar cells, for photodetectors. So, how do you see for piezoelectric piezoelectric devices? Uh, piezoelectric uh, piezoelectric devices are very popular in in, in many areas. Well, uh, I think uh, uh, some of you might know that uh, actually about two weeks ago. I got a request that uh, people are trying to produce facial masks uh, to combat uh, COVID-19. Then they found that uh, to make uh, to make uh, masks, you need the ultrasound welding machines. Then one of the key component is the uh, uh, a piezoelectric ceramic room used to generate ultrasonic waves for the welding process. So people asked me to give some technical principles to show how it was designed and what are the key parameters and so on. So actually, uh, yeah, I read some literature so I, I summarize up uh, the basic uh, uh, information and the properties. Yeah, distributed uh, over the internet. And yeah, many people found it uh, helpful. So anyway, uh, people in electric devices are quite uh, popular in many applications. But today, the very important application is uh, in the uh, internet uh, for the uh, RF devices, because for all the electronics, you need RF devices for the interconnection. So that's a very important part, particularly for the ball and the soul, uh, the regulators. It's important. And there are many large companies in production. Yeah, you can find out in, in Malaysia, there is a big Epson plant to produce cold crystal. Might also be salt devices. So uh, that's a very important uh, product in today's world for information, uh, transmission, processing. So this knowledge is uh, uh, much needed and important. Thank you very much, Prof. Wang. That's really interesting. Uh, I will also further look into it. Uh, and also, it's really nice to know that uh, you have been attached with IEEE. You are a senior member and you have been doing very well. And you have done, in fact, very well. Um, so really appreciate that. And thanks for spending the time for us. Um, uh, I 
it seems like uh, there are no more questions. Just uh, one thing I would like to ask, uh, will you be providing the presentation slide for the participants? Uh, okay, I think uh, I'll check it over. I'll send you a copy of the PDF so you can uh, distribute. So uh, wait for my PDF. All right, that's okay. okay. And email me maybe, yeah. I'll send you a copy. Right. Thank you, Prof. Thank you for that. So we will disseminate the presentation slide as well as the recorded link with all the participants. So uh, with this, I would like to thank Prof. Uh, Ji Wang, and I will hand over the session to our moderator today, Amartip. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Wang, for accepting my invitation. It was a pleasure to have you. It was an excellent informative session. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Wang. Thank you. Thank you to all the audience for joining. Thank you, really appreciate it. I kept in touch. Okay, sure.